Is there one word about how you'd like to be remembered? What's the word you'd like to pop up in people's minds? Um, I think it would be transformative. Willing to really think deeply about changing the system, not just surface programs, not just tweaks. We're not saying we're the best, we're just saying we're different. Three years ago, North Carolina lawmakers started a brand new experiment. You've probably heard of charter schools or restart schools. These are public, so they're funded by the state and take standardized tests, but they don't have to follow state rules on things like calendar, use of funding, staff requirements, or even curriculum. In 2018, the legislature passed House Bill 986, which for the first time gave this same level of flexibility to an entire school district. They called this experiment the renewal school system. With this model, the local Board of Education would decide all matters related to the operation of its schools, including the use of state funds and curriculum, with some exceptions. This would happen in Rowan Salisbury schools. The superintendent here, Dr. Lynn Moody, had been asking for this. Senator Berger asked me at the time, how long do you think this will take? And I said, at least five years. He said, um, that's why I'm gonna let you do it. That's why I'm going to let it go to the floor, is what he said, or something like that. He said, because if you'd have said a year, I would have known you had no idea what you were talking about. So I think everybody would say, just let me have charter-like flexibility. I can do all these things. Then when you're given it, thinking, oh, now what are we going to do? We didn't have a concrete plan. I knew I had a good team who were all innovative, and they were all hungry. There was just this core belief that we would figure it out. This is the sensory pathway at Kuntz Elementary School. It's a healthy way for kids to vent their energy. We're going to create some paths outside so that when our students are outside, they can use those as physical activity too. Principal Nicole Buckner didn't invent this concept. She saw it on one of many trips organized by Dr. Moody, who brought her staff on go and sees to other school districts and influential businesses like SAS. We took teachers um, on a lot of go and sees Miami, New Orleans, California, the New England states, South Carolina, Raleigh, um, just to create a vision of what instruction could be. Once they've seen it, they've experienced it, they went somewhere, you can't take it back. You can't unlearn that. Hola, Latoria. Hola. Hola, Suzette. We have our big math test today that we worked really hard on. And remember, I told you we're made to do hard things and we're going to do super great on it today, right? Yes. Yeah. For students in a really high need school like this, trauma in the home is huge. So having a few minutes in the morning to transition them from home life to school life is critical. Nicole uses a framework called Capturing Kids' Hearts. It includes a lot of social and emotional tools. Every room has the same carpet. Um, we try to be very consistent about that. We have the same expectations. There's five posters that we follow with Capturing Kids' Hearts. You'll notice boxes next to their desks, and those are called buddy boxes, and that's where they can have opportunities for collaboration within a COVID-safe environment. It's a very short amount of time, but it's their assigned area to go in their personal space that they're able to collaborate and connect with their peers. Welcome to North Rowan High School. Here, the curriculum is driven by design thinking through a partnership with Apple. Apple picked like five schools in um, America, in the whole U.S., to do some design thinking. And Maris was like, pick me, pick me, pick me. She interviewed, she blew us all away. I was crying at the end of that. And so they deeply embedded world-class leaders into this school to help her think about this work. Our students work in these design labs every day to address real-world problems, typically um, deeply embedded in our community. We recently got a new business in town. Chewy has a distribution center here in the ah. North area. It's a big deal. It's one of the biggest um, new businesses to come to our area in a long time. 
Um, and so we're doing a whole Welcome Chewy campaign. We worked with a company, OFS, that helped us kind of dream up what a design lab would look like <laughs> and worked with all our stakeholders in doing that dreaming, applying design thinking again. And when the kids came up with these prototypes, I almost uh, was violently ill because uh, they were so outside the box. I don't know where you get furniture that hangs from the ceiling mm -hmm. or the, the um, coffee bars in the classrooms and things like this. But when the designers took all those ideas and worked with these companies who were all very generous, um, we got something that had all those pieces. How does it compare to a traditional classroom? Look at this place. What traditional classroom you have have a stairwell in it? Yeah. When they walk in the room on the first day, they're like, that this gas. is our classroom? <laughs> this is a safe place to fail. Traditional education does not really give students that opportunity. And we're trying to change that. Somebody didn't say, yep, the Apple Watch, I think we should have this, and I'm gonna go draw that out and make it, and it was perfect the first time, let's go. The real world doesn't work like that, but they'll never learn that process if we don't teach them how to do it. There's like rollers on almost all the furniture in here because we expect them to move it. We expect them to take this space and turn it into whatever they need it to be for them to be successful at that time. In the midst of change, people always want to go back. Like that's the ugliest time of all. So what I feel good about is they've been through a lot of change. They've gotten it wrong a lot. They've gotten it right some. Some things that we talked about we are no longer even doing, we've abandoned, and some things we really got right. And one of those things I think that we really got right was seven years ago, we went one-to-one. One-to-one -one. One -one is when a school has a device for every student, and usually low-cost Chromebooks are used for this, but Dr. Moody convinced her board to lease iPads instead and to let students take them home. We want them to be proud of it. When it's new, when it's special, when they own it, when it's personalized, they take care of it. When it's not, um, they don't. Watching some of our children who had never owned anything new, they just wanted to keep the box. They wanted to smell it. When COVID hit us, everybody had a device. Here at Knox Middle School, students are using those iPads to do customized assignments called playlists. The playlist caters to what they need, so it's very personalized for each student. Whatever skills that those students are going to need to be reinforced for them to do the grade level content. They have the choice of choosing between ELA and math. Some are working on multiplication, some are working on division, and they have the ability to use whichever method they want to use, whether that be traditional, box, the lattice, sticks and stones, and of course it's traditional division. I'm working on trying to do ELA first because, because I think that's the most I need helping with. Well, I don't want to take any credit. Actually, all the credit goes to Dr. Moody no. because she, she afforded us the way to think differently. We had a uh, major turnover problem here at the school because we weren't able to compete with the other districts in terms of salary. It takes seven hires to replace one highly effective teacher. Michael's model was probably one of the more radical, wouldn't you say, particularly with the teacher pay? Teacher and it pay? Was controversial. Yeah, yeah, it's controversial. Yeah, it's controversial. Yeah, it was, it was a challenge. There were people on the board and in the community who was like, everybody has to be paid the same. No, they don't. We were able to uh, secure six highly transformational teachers in this building to really model lessons, uh, coach other teachers, show teachers what it means to do high quality work, build relationships with students, and this has helped changing the culture of the school. The last school we visited in the Renewal District was Knollwood Elementary. Here, Principal Shonda Hairston said students haven't seen much of the world, and she's trying to change that by taking them out on expeditions. Our students' opportunities, to me, have been limited. And so when they're reading about things in books, how can we bring that to life? A lot of our experiences have ended, uh, ended up being outside. Our first graders go fishing, our second graders have gone camping, our third graders have gone ziplining, our fourth graders have gone to the Outer Banks, to the mountains. Our big trip was to New York. We took wow. some students, yes. And that was just amazing. Most of her children 
can't read a book that says my grandfather took me fishing because they don't know what fishing is and they probably don't have a grandfather. When they went fishing the first time, she was like, every book in this library about fishing, water, river, streams, life jackets, anything related to it were all checked out. She didn't have to say, read a book about fishing. Like, let's read a book about lakes in North Carolina. Like, they were hungry because they had never been. They were trying to get all the information. It really is investing in them. We've spent a lot of money on stuff, but we're spending money on experiences and memories. The four schools we've seen today all use different innovative practices, but they all follow the same framework for decision making. It's called the directional system. If you ask any of the principals in this district, I guarantee they can tell you just like that what the directional system is. What's the directional system? Well, there's three main pillars, right? You've got your unique life goals, you've got your interpersonal skills, and you've got your academic skills. And each one of those three are not like one is more important than the other. They're all equally important. We didn't want 34 schools doing the same thing because we knew we couldn't learn and grow that way. You saw one school where it is very driven by intentional practices and everybody's exactly the same. Michael's is the other world, like use your creativity and your imagination. This thinking about one size for transformational leadership and changing a school fits all is just not true. You can't pick up any of this and do it exactly the same in another building, in another community. You've got to create it yourself. And the directional system has really given us a nice guide. Dr. Moody said the flexibility of renewal helped pay for some of these programs, especially the trips. But ultimately, she underestimated the need for more funding. One of the things that I remember so clearly is when I was trying to convince Senator Berger to let this get on the floor. He said, so you're telling me you can do it for the same money, all you need is the freedom to do it? And I said, oh, absolutely. And I really believe that to be true. I no longer believe that to be yeah. true. You've got to have money for research and development. The Renewal School District kind of gave us an opportunity to look at what would the education experts do with full flexibility? And was it truly something that was necessary to move education forward? A lot of the things that they're doing, they could have already done under the old program. It was really about thinking about things differently and not necessarily having the flexibility to spend the money differently, but they thought because they had the flexibility to spend the money differently, then they started thinking differently. There's been very few things that I would say to people, no, you couldn't do that because you didn't have renewal. Almost everything you can do, you just don't think that way. We had just never shared our teacher's salaries with our principals, we saw no need. But if you did, it would still change things, it would still change the conversation in your school, even though you don't have renewal to be able to change those. The first time we gave them their teacher's salaries, do you yes. remember that, Kelly? Their eyes were like, you mean this teacher is making this much money and my best performing teacher in my school is making this much money? This, this teacher that doesn't show up one day a week is making $20,000 more than this teacher who's killing it down here? Well, yeah, that's the system we're living in. Now, we haven't changed all that, but just knowing that, I think change principles expectation, no. You are one of our highest paid teachers. It's not okay that you don't show up for school. This district went one-to-one -one with iPads several years before renewal even started because Dr. Moody took the initiative to make it happen. I think it was in an April meeting that she said, we're going one-to-one. -one. We were all like, okay, like we, we got a year and a half, it's good. The very next meeting we had, she came back and she said, we're going one-to-one -one in August. And everybody in the room was like, she's crazy. What do, you, what do you mean we're going one-to-one -one in August? She hadn't even been here a year yet. I like new ideas and I get excited about new ideas. So uh, I get bored with all ideas. So sometimes that can be confusing to people. Like, oh, well, what is she talking about now? Because I'm always wanting to learn something new. And I'm motivated by that. And I'm impatient in the process of it. Well, let's just try it. If it doesn't work, we will we'll stop doing it or some version of that. 
I had a principal this week tell me, and it was really hard to hear, he said, like, we were scared to death of you. Like, you just did not play. What do you mean I didn't play? Like, I think I'm the easiest person in the world to work for. Like, I'm so open. I am so easy. He was like, no, no. If, if, if we weren't doing it at 100%, you fired people. I guess I really had very high expectations from all of our principals. I think I would have pushed more for them to have had a more balanced life with their family. I wish that I would have spent more time listening sometimes. There's a lot of things that I know if I could have a do-over, that I would probably do over. What's your biggest one? It's, it's, it's kind of funny because if you ask me my biggest do-over of all time is when I first started teaching school. I had a little boy in my class who was definitely ADD. I didn't know what ADD was when I first started teaching. I was in Wake County at Carroll Middle School. And this little boy would like tap on the desk, he would kick the chair, or whatever. And uh, I disciplined him severely on an ongoing basis. And because I didn't know. And um, I've always regretted that. I've always thought about how I could have taught him differently. Like I see that child. Maybe that's why in her later years as superintendent, Dr. Moody tried to focus more on listening. She started meeting with this group of students each month to get real feedback on how school was going. The reason that I'm part of this student group is to kind of develop my understanding of the educational system I'm a part of, as well as devise ways to make it better for me and my, my peers. Before we go, there's someone else you should meet. How did you end up getting the job that you wanted? I went here for four years and it really transformed me. When I first came here, I did not care about school. I didn't really care about anything. But then I met uh, met some amazing teachers. One of them were uh, Tremaine Gilmore. He really transformed my life. He made me care about school. Gave me my first A. I prayed to God. I said, "You know, Lord, give me a job that I love." And then it was amazing. The next day, Miss Williams, Miss Rossmeyer walked up to me and offered me this position. I was so happy, I was, it didn't take me a second but to say yes. <laughs> I had a breakfast with Dr. Moody. I said, excuse me ma'am, can I ask for a couple of things? And she said yes. And I said, well, a lot of the guys at work want uh, maintenance uniforms. Now it's not my big request. Now my request is shoes because I was spending upwards of $100 on shoes. And as a custodian, you know, you don't make a whole lot. And amazingly, I actually got him. I was, yeah, I, was, yeah, I, was, I wasn't expecting that. I was like, man, I'm just a custodian. She's, he's like, oh, no, he's a game changer. One of the things we learned from Chick fil A about customer service like, why do people come back? Why do they stay in that really long line to do that? Why would they come to our school? Are we Chick fil A? Like, when you drive up or the, you come to school, do you feel like? somebody genuinely cares and it's an honor to serve you um, or are you just here like here's your cheeseburger and that's what we learn from businesses I hope we never become their cheeseburger anymore thank you for all of your time thank y'all for all of your time thank you